Hi, this is Lance Culver and this is going to be a tie flow beginners tutorial on particle groups. If you're new to tie flow, this will be a good lesson for you. The sooner someone understands the concept of grouping particles, the greater potential they'll have for what they're able to put together in a simulation. I'm going to begin by going over to the create tab and selecting helpers, clicking on this drop down and going down to tie flow, create a tie icon drag it out here in the center and maybe lift it up just a little bit and then I'm going to create tie flow go ahead and drag a birth operator into a new event I'm going to birth all the particles on frame 0 400 of them next a position icon and pick the tie icon and change the display to geometry Next, I'm going to give them a shape. I'm going to go ahead and just add a few for a little bit of randomness and make them all 3D and just select a few of these hardware objects and scale them up to about 500% with a random rotation and a physics shape. All right, so next, I'm going to create a sphere and I'm going to position it just above the ground. Drop a birth objects into a new event and pick the sphere. Shut off the original. And a spin operator. I'm going to change the spin axis to world space. Reduce the Z value to zero and increase the Y value to one. Change the interpolation to 0.75 and change the timing to continuous and increase the spin rate to about 400 and add a physics shape. So now if I let the simulation play out, the sphere is gonna roll across the particles and interact with them as they collide. So if I wanted just the particles that are within its path, within a specific radius, to do something in particular, like let's say lift up off the floor, I could use particle groups for that. And to set that up, I could just select tie flow come on over to the main settings under the physics rollout and come down and enable a few of these simulation groups here so now if I let the simulation play you'll see all the particles are falling through the floor the reason for this is because once simulation groups have been enabled the default ground collider will only apply to particles that are on a simulation group so I need to add a particle groups operator into each of these events and then I'll go ahead and rename these real quick. All right, so I'm gonna place the sphere particle on group one and the hardware particles on group two. So now they won't fall through the floor, but you'll notice that the sphere is no longer interacting with these nails and screws. And that's because once a particle is on a group, it will only interact with a particle that it shares a group with. So I'm going to select the sphere particle groups operator and place it on group two as well. And now it will interact. So to get these particles to rise, use a property test and change the test type to neighbors. So if I just drop a display operator into a new event connected to the property test, we'll see now all these particles test true. And that's because each of them has less than 100 neighbors, which is another particle within 10 centimeters. So if I were to change this to let's say greater than zero, they all test true again because all of them have a greater number than zero neighbors within 10 centimeters. But if I come down here to the particle groups rollout and I tell the property test to only look at particles that are on simulation group one, which in this case is just this sphere, then none of them test true because the sphere is not within 10 centimeters of any of them. But if I let the simulation play, so now this can be set up in multiple ways to do any number of different things. So I could add a force operator into this event and it can increase the strength of it to something like 
if you're really new to tie flow, increasing the value of the strength actually lowers the amount of gravity being applied to the object. So this just makes it a little bit lighter. But to help it lift up off the ground, I'm going to use a speed operator in here above the force. And I'm going to change the speed magnitude to 1.5. And I'm going to change the direction to a long icon arrow and pick the tie icon. And check reverse. And I'm going to change that timing to continuous. I'm also going to select this property test and increase this radius to maybe 15 centimeters. So I want after the sphere goes through for the particles to fall back to the ground. And there are a few different ways that could be accomplished. One way that might seem obvious would be to use a property test into this event. A search for neighbors it is less than or equal to zero. We have 15 centimeter radius. And again, search on group one. So it's saying if I have less than or equal to zero neighbors within 15 centimeters that are on group one, is the sphere still within this radius? And when it's no longer within that radius, it sends them into this event where this force and speed operator don't exist, so the normal gravity is applied and they just fall back to the ground. But let's say the sphere was going to, you know, make a loop and come back through, hit at a time test. Just say maybe after 100 frames. Create a copy of this and reverse this direction here and connect that to the time test. So then when it rolled back through, it just hits these particles. Now I could create a copy of this property test, put it in this event and loop it back. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you a little bit more of a dynamic way of setting this up. I'm going to drop a set target into this event and I'm going to change the target to proximity and then under the target filters rollout enable group one and then down under proximity and change it to absolute closest. And now I can select the speed operator under the filters rollout enable filters click add and then change the property type to target distance you Can change the value to 15 centimeters and change the channel to target. Shut this property test off. So just to briefly explain, when the particles that make it into this event, I use a set target operator and set the sphere as their target. And then I apply a condition in the filter of the speed that says apply the speed as long as the target, which is the sphere, is less than 15 centimeters. And when it's no longer within 15 centimeters, it doesn't apply the speed the only force that's being applied is the gravity, which just isn't enough to keep them off the ground so they fall back. So that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you're getting a few ideas about how you could use groups in your own simulations, but I have another video coming that relies heavily on particle groups. It's still a beginner's lesson, but there's just a little bit more to it than this one. So hopefully you'll get a chance to check that one out also. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. If there was any part of it that you didn't understand or that you're having problems with, feel free to drop a comment. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already done so, so please subscribe that would be super cool of you until next time i hope you have a great day take care thanks again see ya